Um, I don't know what our time is, but uh, I wanted to ask you a question, Josie, and the question has to do with, okay, so we've grown the plants, whatever vegetables we've grown, we've harvested, it's at the table now. In your memory, and I know your, your, your mama, your mama Esther Martinez well, uh, well enough, and I spent many hours with her. At the table, at her house, when you were growing up, or even with your grandmother, what, what foods do you remember being served at the table that were traditional? Oh, I, I, I can tell you, you know, all gang is one thing that comes to my mind, and I know the Indian school kids will, will, will know that because I'm sure they still have that uh, fed to them in the morning by their mothers or their grandmothers. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. And can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. I'm not too loud. <laughs> well, anyway, I was, first of all, let me just say this before I get to the table. But uh, I was born into a family of farmers, fishermen, hunters. So the food was very plentiful when I was growing up. We were in the garden from sun, before sun up to sundown. We had breaks for maybe lunch, and then we'd work out in the field again till about 2 o'clock, and then my grandma used to take us in, and so we can eat and uh, let us go swimming. But I'll tell you what's on the table, and then I can kind of retrospect, go back to my, my youth, okay? A lot of the food that was served when I was growing up was, uh, again, like uh, Tessie, I said, again, it's a uh, but in Tewa, what it means is a toli, and it's a blue cornmeal that's grind up, and it's making to like a, a drink, but it's creamy drink, but it's blue cornmeal. It's always said that it's good for tummy aches, or it's just to get you warm on a cold day, you know, you drink it all, all winter long if you have not blue cornmeal. <laughs> and the blue cornmeal we used to make what they call sake. And sakewe is like a mush. And it's, the mush is, uh, what do you say? Well, sometimes we make oatmeal, you know, when it's kind of get thick. Well, the blue cornmeal is making mush like that. But you can put milk on it, and you just eat it like a cereal. And it's still served nowadays. I know a lot of the senior programs still serve it on their menus. Uh, the other thing that uh, sakewe, how you can eat it, was they used to, like if you're a farmer, if you have farm animals, when you butcher, you have to, you're a pig, and then you cut into pieces, and of course you make a, uh, like, that's where I can describe it, chicharrones, and the grease that's left over from the chicharrones, you melt it, and you get your sakewe, you kind of dip your, your cornmeal mush with it, and eat it, and it's still good. Just don't eat too much. <laughs> but uh, in my growing up years, you know, that like I as a child or my grandparents were, or my mom or my uncles were always out in the field also, so they worked it off. And I know my mom made a lot of uh, what you call sake with the pig fat and the lard like that. But when she passed on in her later years, I remember her cholesterol was not up at all because she, I don't know if it was just because she just worked so hard throughout the years, whether it be in the garden or whether it was just whatever project she had around the house, but I know her cholesterol wasn't high. And even during that phase of her elder years, she used to eat a lot of sac, uh, the sake and the fancy, which is the chicharrones. Uh, those were served then, those are served nowadays. And my brother still makes a lot of that stuff, which I don't know. And so let's see what else is served a lot in those days. Uh, corn, when the, the Pueblo people, they raise corn, but there's more than one type of corn. There's the white corn. The white corn is uh, a lot of times used for traditional, traditional things, or when it's ground up, when it's dry, you know, they use it a lot in the Kiva. But then there's yellow corn. And yellow corn is sweet corn. And that, in the past, we used to use the urnal, the big urnal. How many of you don't know what an urnal is? Oh, no, no. Oh. 
Pante. Pante. The Arnolds. Yeah, they know. They have Okay. Yeah. Well, we used to roast the sweet corn in that, but I don't know, three, four uh, loads of it. But that corn used to be dry out for the winter and be hanging from the trees where they had a, there'd be a tree here, there'd be a tree here, but there'd be a post running across it so that dry corn, dry sweet corn for the winter use. Well, we ate a lot of that mixed or made stew with, with the food that was uh, hunted by my uncles. I had uncles that would go hunting, they got, got deer, they got uh, elk, bear. On one occasion, I remember the bear. Was, I wasn't even afraid to eat the bear meat that time because I didn't know much about bear, but <laughs> other than the fact that it was brown and they can eat you. Another <laughs> 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 uh, thing they used to um, hunt for us uh, with sheep. But well, they didn't hunt for that, they grew that. But we, we had a nearby uncle that had raised one cow. We had one cow because we, we all went to milk that cow or took turns of milking that cow. Uh, the other things that they had was uh, mm, I had an uncle. And he was Sue, and he married my mother's younger, older sister. And he used to say that our our farmland was really rich. And he said, you can eat anything and find anything on those fields. Well, we didn't know till later what he was talking about. He made some stew, of course, with the corn. And then he had made it with potatoes, and he brought a big pot over to my grandma's house next door. So we was all going to town on that stew, and then we found out, you know, oh, it, was, it was very delicious, and it was. I remember it. But we were eating baby parrot dogs, I guess, or young <laughs> parrot dogs. <laughs> but um, as long as my uncle lived around home before he left from the Pueblo area, like I say, he was, soon, he was a school teacher, but they traveled a lot in the TIA schools. He used to cook that. And, Oh, that was one thing I remember, but up until now, after he's gone, you know, we, we don't have it anymore. <laughs> but uh, that we still get venison, we still get elk. Uh, I have been to people's homes, that my other native people's homes that have had their meat. Uh, I don't have any hunters in the family now, but we also get... Uh, in growing up, we had a lot of frog legs that were served on the tables. And the one frog legs, uh, uh, first time I ate it, I didn't want to because they used to say, you know, you know they, their little nerves still jittery or something like that. I won't eat it. But then first, and I asked, but how does it taste? And like everybody says, it tastes like chicken. I don't know about that, but they do it. Josie. We've so many stories, but we're running out of time. And uh, I want to thank all three of you for being on the panel. One of the things I'd like to do before we leave, if you don't mind, Angelo, and it won't take a long time to go, we've got 20 slides, and if we can just roll the slides over and over, and, and it'll take just a few minutes, if you don't mind. It'll bring back memories of what was and what we may still be doing in the communities today. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, see the corn? People on the pan panel talked about the corn and the sharing of, of tasks. This is a good example. Early 1900s picture at Santa Clara. Deer dancing. Uh, Josie talked about uh, e still eating deer, and we honor the deer through dance. Uh, all sorts, everything is not wasted. Uh, the horns, the, the, the shoes are made from, from the hides. Wonderful, wonderful picture of, of a couple from, from the early 1900s, Husky. And Walter, help me with this. But, uh, and, and John, help me with this. What they're doing is they're thrashing, right? They're, they're thrashing beans? Yes. Okay, good. They're thrashing wheat. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love this picture. I, I don't have a memory of this picture, but uh, his daughter is still, Kootsi, we is still alive, and she just celebrated her, 
her 100th birthday, but this is her, uh, this is her father. And look at the uh, shoes. I love to look at her shoes because in those days, in the early 1900s, if they bought any, any shoes in, at Bonn in Espanola, they would take the soles off because they were used to the moccasins. <laughs> Uh, I love this picture too because it's uh, uh, the mother, and you can't hardly see the mother, but you can see her hand making tortillas in front of uh, the fireplace with her daughter watching. It's a wonderful picture. Again, kids are also part. We learn how to do adult tasks early on. These kids are, even as they're playing, they're, uh, they're sharing in adult tasks. Look at the chili strings getting ready for winter. Everything had to be dried. Uh, and then look, in, look at the corn up there, uh, hung, hung from, from atop the, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, yeah, what did you call it? Something. Uh-huh, okay, enter, where's the enter? Okay, on, wait a minute, no, did I, there we go. Am I going back? Oh, here is a uh, pante that you talked about, Josie, where we uh, where we cooked our bread and uh, wheat. Did, as I said before, wheat was not a big part of our lives for quite a while until later on. Yeast was not a part of our lives either. So that you see that the bread that she's putting into the pante is is flat, but that's the kind of weekly weekly uh, the people would uh, make the bread from from the pante. Uh, again, a 1900s picture. Uh, look at the abundance, as, as Josie mentioned, as, as Marie mentioned, corn on top of the ramada, wheat way on top for the, for the animals, and here we are getting ourselves ready for the winter. Um, the lady right there, I, uh, uh, why I chose that, this particular slide is because of the chili strand, but she's doing pottery, which was another very strong activity at Santa Clara, but Again, chili strands. Corn, more corn. Um, this might be as clear, but you see just so much activity. On top of the roast, everything is being dried. We went from drying and then uh, canning in the 20s and 30s. Uh, um, people from outside of our community came to try to uh, help us, teach us how to can. So, Canning didn't become popular. Drying was what we always uh, were used to for, for, for generations. Uh, some people at Santa Clara still do uh, canning. They learn how I can. Again, uh, winnowing. And then Santa Clara, a uh, broad view of Santa Clara Pueblo back in the early days. Uh, just our, an architectural sense of who Santa Clara is back then. Uh, bread making again, they must have started using yeast. I don't know what date this is, probably. You know this one, John, that's your relative, isn't it? That's your grandmother, John. Good, 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 good. I'm glad I selected that picture. Do you have a picture of that, a photo of that? Yes. Good, okay. This one, just abundance. And in the background is a day school that came into our lives back way late in the eight, late, late 1800s. We all went to school there, uh, grade school. John did, I did, Walter did. Me uh, making chicos. Chico is, uh, the tail word for chicos is chijo, but when the Spanish ear first heard it, they couldn't pronounce it uh, chijo, so they, uh, they called it chico, and globally, everybody knows it at chico, so I'm drying corn to make chicos. Uh, again, uh, corn, because corn is a staple of our lives, uh, not as much as back in the earlier pictures, but we still celebrate the, uh, uh, and do honor, give honor to corn. Just as this little girl is doing, we had our big feast day, August the 12th, and we do our corn dance then. Marie, you're having your big feast day uh, September the 30th next week, so good luck on that. That's the end of our, our, um, our presentation, but I thank you all for listening and for being a part of the, uh, the oral memories. I wish there was so much more to, uh, uh, to, 
more time, but this is what we have, and we are running late. And Angela, it's yours now. Thank you so much.